hello guys lorem fm here welcome to another tutorial on inkscape today we'll be looking at the paint bucket tool or the field bounded lines of bounded areas just as inkscape put it other software call it the smart fill and so on so basically what this tool does is that instead of the normal fill that helps you just select a color for instance i have this shape selected i can just select any color to give it a fill and the color will be together with the object as one object what the smart fill or the paint bucket tool does is that it helps you fill a specific area in a specific shape or a part so you can find the tool at the left hand side of your toolbar here you can look at it here it says fill bounded areas or you use the shortcut U on your keyboard so i either click this here or i click on U on my keyboard to activate the tool so once you activate the tool you will see the various settings you can do based on the tools on the top menu bar here so the first one says fill by so there are different ways you can use to fill the tool so you can fill by red color you can uh, fill by green blue hue saturation lightness and alpha so all these are basically when you are using on uh, the blend mode in the layer aspect of of inkscape which we'll get to in future videos but for this lesson all you need to know is that you can either use the alpha or the visible color so that's basically the normal setting you should know so once you have that selected and over here you can set your feed color and your outline so i can click on any color and you can see that my feed color is changing here so i have this shape selected which is why it is changing as well so i can deselect it and click on you to activate my um fill bounded area or the bucket tool so once i select another color you can see that from the top menu bar the color is changing and i can also remove or give it a different outline so the next one here is the threshold okay so before we get to the next one which is threshold i would like to demonstrate how this field bucket tool works so the field bucket tool works by just once you have select the field bucket tool you just click on the area you want to fill so once you click on the area you can see it has filled the color into the part i have here so and also you make sure that the area which you want to fill has no gap it's a closed enclosed area so for instance this one here you can see that there is no any gap so once i click to fill it will just fill the whole shapes the whole space in that part because there is no open gap whereas if you come over here you can see that there is an open gap here and if i click to fill you will see that there will not be any changes here because there is an open gap and the color would easily escape so that's how you use the bucket tool you make sure that anywhere you are filling is an enclosed area there is no gap just as this before you make your fill and another thing to notice is that the more detail you want the fill the bucket tool or the fill bounded areas to be is how zoomed in you are to the shape so for instance if i zoom out just like this on this my party and i click on it to fill so once i zoom in you can see that there are still some spaces that the uh tool does, does not quite fit the color so the color is meant to cover all the spaces but for the fact that i am zoomed out it's kind of not captured everything so you want to make sure that you are zooming quite to a reasonable amount and you can see the area which you are filling the color into so that it will fill every aspect of the area so once i'm zoomed in like this and i click on it to fill you can see that it has filled it perfectly well now and also once you are zooming done zoom in too much to the extent that some parts are like cut out from your from the frame of your view so for instance i want to feed the same part but i'm zoomed in so much that some parts are cut out so once i click to fill then i zoom out back you can see that this the fill is not complete because once when i zoomed in i zoomed in too much to the extent that 
is it kind of cut out so from the point which your view stops that is where the the feed will stop because that's the end of the pixel of your screen or whatever view you are using so you make sure that where you want to feel is zoomed in quite well and it is also captured within the frame of your view so as to get a more detailed feel around your shape so that's it so let's talk about the threshold so the threshold what it does is that it just shows the maximum allowed difference between the clicked pixel and the neighboring pixel to be counted so it just basically tell you that how much difference do you want from the pixel you are feeling to be different from the neighboring pixel that is the ones around it so for now you can see that our threshold is increased to an to a hundred so when i feel you can see that uh it's kind of feed the whole thing and if i click on my um my pick tool to move what i have just feed now you can see that is kind of way more thinner than this border here because it has it has the difference between the area i'm supposed to fill and the neighboring pixel was quite high that is why it like entered the whole area so if i reduce my threshold down to zero so once i click to fill you can see that it is more more it is the difference between the uh, pixel I just feel that the number of pixel is not that much anymore. In fact, there is no actually difference. So this is actually a part so you can't really understand uh, how the threshold works. So to really show you the importance of this threshold, so this is the image where I got this part from. So if I click on my field tool, so because you can also make a fill on an image that's another uh, importance of the fill bounded area tool or the bucket or the fill bucket or the smart fill whichever name you are familiar with so the one of the importance is that you can also fill on an image so for instance this is a jpeg it is an image i downloaded which i got this part from so if i want to fill on this image the same shape that i feel on the part i want to also feel it on the image so once i go to my um uh field bounded area tools and you can see my threshold is at zero and i click to fill that same that same space you can see that the the pixels are like scattered because the difference between where i want to fill and the neighboring pixel is zero there's no difference so it's kind of want to feel like individual pixels that are connected so that's why we are getting this jagged line so to really see the importance when i increase my threshold up to a hundred to like to like make the difference to be even higher and i click to fill that same area you can see it cuts the fill perfectly well just as it did on this my part here so that is the importance of the threshold so you won't really see the importance when you are using it on a part because a part has already become a vector uh, file so that is a it's in svg format and we know that vectors doesn't have pixels that much because once once you zoom you can see you can't even see any pixel because it's a vector file so once i zoom in on this image now you can see this these are pixels on the image you can see that it is really kind of blurry those are the pixels so that is one importance of using the threshold so another setting we have on our field bounded area tools is the grow and shrink by so this shows the amount of grow which from the description here it says positive and shrink negative the created negative the created field part so what this means is that it's, it shows you it helps you to increase how well you want your field to surpass the outline or the bounded areas which you are feeling so for instance our shrink and go by is just one which is the the normal setting so it will just fill around the area but if we increase its high let's say for instance we increase it significantly high and we click to fill the area you can see it has 
the shrink is now too high that it has covered the whole of the outline even beyond so if we can also reduce it to be kind of medium but you can see that it will still cover the area but it's not as big as it was before so since we have both negative and positive that means we can go below one and make a fill so you can see once you go below one you are not really seeing anything because it is significantly low for you to even see the difference but let's increase it a little bit let's see this so you can see now it's now reduced so you can see that it's looking as if it's trying to avoid the border because the grow and shrink level is on the negative so it's kind of just put it as this once once your grow to shrink shrink setting is negative just put it that your field shape will be shrinking and once it's positive it will just be increasing it will just be enlarging so that is it about the grow and shrink setting under the field bounded area tool or the bucket field or the smart field so the next one here is close gap so if you remember i mentioned that once you are filling a part you make sure that the gaps are closed so that what you are feeling won't escape out but here in inkscape once the, there is a gap you can't feel anything so once i click on this to feel you can see that nothing is happening because there is this gap so until when i kind of close this gap before i will be able to feel but thank god there's another setting here that says close gap so right now the setting is showing none that means once the gap is open there's no way i can be able to fill and we have small medium and large this small is that once you have a like a small gap inkscape will still help you to fill and cover that gap let's for example just to demonstrate i have this shape here which i've kind of break and make a small gap here so you can see that there's a gap initially when this is unknown it's not expected to fill you can see it's not filling anything because there is a gap so it can't fill so once i move it down to small and i click on fill you can see it will try to like cover the gap which is there and create a fill okay so that did not work let me set it to medium probably inkscape doesn't regard this space as a small gap so it's set now to medium let me make the same fill and see if it will cover the gap there okay, that didn't work for medium let's try large which is the last setting so let's kind of zoom in a bit also to get a more detailed fill so once we have zoomed in and we click on this it's supposed to fill the gap that is there now okay you can see it has filled that gap you can see the spot at which it filled the gap so that's it about uh, the fill bucket tool so that's how to use the tool make sure you get all the settings right so that you are you can have your desired fill on your toolbar so thank you guys for watching if this video was helpful kindly leave a like leave a comment if you have any questions and i will catch you guys in the next video peace